And hello and welcome everyone to the Comic Multiverse, where the worlds of nerd meet. It's episode 94, everybody. An episode that might actually be a day late for you patrons, because I didn't think we'd be doing a show this week. I know Matt's going away for two weeks, and I thought he was going away earlier, so I was going to put the commentary up, and I was going to have a guest <laughs> host, but he, but he's still here, so it's like, you know what, fuck it, we're so close to 100 episodes, let's not miss an episode, let's just do it. Yeah, let's just do it, and there was a lot of news as well. There is a lot of news, I didn't want to wait on some of this stuff, because yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot going on, Matt, it's a busy time of year. It is, it is. It's a busy time of year. We got uh, Marvel Fresh Start. They're announcing a bunch of titles. We got big comic book movies coming up. We got DC Comics that looks like they're going into let's let's basically just call it for funsies' sake. Let's call it a uh, Rebirth Two because that's basically what it looks like we're going into. Pretty much, yeah. Which hey, I I actually I actually heard from a source that apparently they were going to have a big thing at WonderCon this year and they were basically going to call it DC Rebirth 2 but they didn't at the last second. Really? Yes, that they were going to essentially call it something like that or at least in their memos that's what they were calling it like okay DC Rebirth 2 rollout or you know <laughs> this this needs to be the DC Rebirth of this year. But then at the last second, they just didn't go ahead with it. Because if you notice, a lot of the news we're going to be talking about this week came out of WonderCon. But all the DC stuff doesn't have a name or designation to it. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. And maybe in a way it's good that they don't have a name and designation. Like, I think yeah. Marvel has kind of killed our enthusiasm for that. Because it's always like, you know, fresh start, make mine Marvel, you know, uh, Marvel Legacy. This is the uh, a new initiative every couple months where it's like, guys, you don't need a big fancy overarching name for it we're already fans we're already in you can just call it what's happening this week yeah it doesn't always have to be a big event no not everything doesn't need to be an event sometimes it can just be hey here's some fun comics you can read yeah but uh, we're not going to talk about comics at first we're going to talk about comic book movies this week saw the release of the second deadpool trailer mm, a really cool trailer Yes, I liked this one much more than I liked the first one, I do believe. Uh, yeah, this one was really cool, really, really showed a bit more of the story, which mm. is kind of ringing true to like the leaks that have come out. Um, but yeah, it looks really awesome. It looks really cool. Yes, you mentioned the leaks. Apparently the reason this trailer looks so much different is supposedly, and this is, this is the hot rumor, this is the hot scuttlebutt here that you only get on the comic multiverse that uh, early test screenings of Deadpool 2 were not good, were not favorable, and apparently they had to take a lot of it back to square one and kind of, you know, try and recapture what people liked so much about the original. And this trailer definitely seems to be trying to say, hey, what you liked about the original is in here too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They, they had um, uh, some jokes that were kind of similar to the first one. They had characters that people liked from the first one a bit more predominant in this trailer. Yeah, uh, like we like, got to hey, see like Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Owl and the the cabbie. Yep, yep. His his girlfriend even because if you remember the whole first movie was all it was it was a love story it was all about him trying to get with this girl and then the trailer for the sequel she was in one like one little blink and you'll miss it clip. Yeah, yeah. I like it. They're being like, no, 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 don't worry. We promise she's still she's still a big factor in this one. It's it's funny because when we talked about the trailer originally, you and I both thought, oh, oh, it's a Terminator riff. You know, Cable's coming back in time to kill Deadpool because Deadpool does something horrible that ruins the future. No, it's not Deadpool, actually. It's this kid. It's the kid from Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah, who's... I don't know whether he's playing a mutant that's like a well-known one, but he looks like he has like some type of firepower. Yeah, it'd be funny if he was Kid Apocalypse. It would be funny if that was Evan, but I get I, I get the feeling it's not going to be Evan. No, no, I don't think it is. Heck, even this trailer got a little bit meta, too, when he's talking to T.J. Miller's character, and he's like, man, you know, the sequel, better than the original. So good, we might not even make a three. We don't even know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll run, it, run it into the ground. <laughs> be yeah, because, and also, let's face it, with the Disney Fox acquisition, we don't even know if you're going to get a third one of these. Deadpool might just live in the margins of other people's movies now. Yeah, maybe. Or, you know, if they own Fox, he'll only be released under the Fox banner and not under the Disney banner. Yeah, yeah. 
because you know it would be it would be a little uncomfortable to see uh what is it the the disney castle and hear the na 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 <laughs> then deadpool comes in uh crotch chopping calling people <laughs> dixicles <laughs> the mouse does not like <laughs> But the mouse likes money, so you can probably stick around, Deadpool. And plus, yeah. you're malleable enough as a character and meta and fourth wall breaking enough. You could literally show up in the next stage of X-Men movies under Marvel and just make a joke about that. Where it's like, yeah, people like me enough, so I stuck around. <laughs> yeah, I survived the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I survived the apocalypse. You're the only one who knows there's been multiple X-Men franchises. You can literally go, meh, third time's the charm, right? <laughs> We'll, we'll get it this time. We got that Disney money. <laughs> what what else do you think of the trailer there, Matt? Um, I'm just trying to think back of because there was quite a bit that happened in this. We got like it was early in the week. Lots of cool cable stuff. Um, we got um basically the the confirmation of X Force. Yes, that yes they will be a team. Yes, they will be X Force. And again, another great meta joke. So we need a team of badass mutants who are young enough to hold their own franchises. <laughs> in <EV. laughs> yeah. There seems to be a lot more, um, a lot more X Men related stuff in this one. Like in mm -hmm. terms of like the the actual X Men. Like we saw the uh, Xavier mentioned. We saw the Blackbird. Um, uh, Deadpool riding around in Professor Xavier's chair. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, what else would you do if you were a comedic uh, badass like Deadpool and visited the X Mansion? Obviously, you'd want to take his chair for a spin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I bet Xavier has like a whole closet filled with different wheelchairs he's had over the years. He's got the he's got the hovering one from the '90s. You know, the one in the cartoon. Yeah, the I big ride yellow that one. one. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one I want to ride. He's got the Stephen Hawking one from the movie. He's got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Deadpool 2 looks to be shaping up pretty solidly. And, I mean, we're going to be seeing it not that in not that long. Yeah, like two months or something. Yeah, hard yeah. to believe. Man, man, Matt, what are we going to do after Deadpool and after Avengers Infinity War? I guess we'll just have to wait a month for the next superhero movie, whatever that might be. <laughs> yeah, the next superhero movie or the next Star Wars film or something. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, jeez, th there might be a couple weeks there, guys, where we have no nerdy movie to talk about or to be excited <laughs> for or to make videos about. <laughs> That's that's the thing. Everyone's like, when's the bubble gonna burst on this, you know, nerd cinema, re uh, nerd cinema renaissance? And me and Matt are just sitting here like, hopefully never, because we got bills to pay. Yeah, well, if they keep making money. They're not gonna, you know, go away anytime soon. They do keep making money there, and if they don't make money here, they make money in China, like uh, like Pacific Rim. Thank oh, you, God. People's that movie's Republic awful. of China. <laughs> Is it? Did you see it? I haven't had yeah. a chance to see it. Oh, uh, it it's so schlocky it's it gets rid of like everything that was good about the first one or at least kind of interesting yeah and they make charlie day the villain <laughs> oh do they really oh that's yeah. sad yeah, charlie kelly he, yeah he goes full charlie kelly in it as well oh that's that's sad hey with new kaiju fight milk <laughs> <laughs> made for jaegers by jaegers he's experienced in kaiju lore <laughs> that's sad and yet not unexpected at the same time but yeah hey I, i'm sure the chinese audiences loved it and i'm sure i'll pick it up on dvd at some point yeah i'm sure they probably did like it. it it's it's exactly like the movies they like all those transformers and stuff like that and half the movie's set in like china and exactly all that sort of stuff yeah because because they know who's paying the bill for this one much like that last transformers movie had a huge bit in china because chinese investors paid a lot of money for it yep oh man thank you people's republic i for one welcome our new chinese overlords <laughs> now ni, ni hao ma as you can see i am wearing the party colors of red because joel <laughs> because joel is fine with you and wants to keep making money <laughs> That's that's the way the world's going, Matt. We gotta learn a little Mandarin if we want to get by. <laughs> Look, maybe we could. Do, that's the thing, man. The comic multiverse needs to find some Chinese investors to open us up to a whole new audience. Oh God, can you imagine? <laughs> what, but Matt? What do we have to do to be more Chinese audience friendly? What do we gotta do? It, it explosions. <laughs> 
Okay, in editing, we will work some more explosions in here. We'll also, uh, what is it, try and work some messages into our show from now on about how, you know, the uh, big government is good and only by coming together as a group, as a community, can we help overcome the evil West. <laughs> there you go. Alrighty. Starting, <laughs> starting, starting now. That's the new comic multiverse mission statement. Let's get some uh, Chinese investors here. Let's get some of that Chinese money. Man, I, I had a great pitch if they were ever to make another uh, Twenty One Jump Street movie because those movies are really meta about how movies get made, and the sequel was all about what a bad idea it is to make comedy sequels. Yeah. If they if they ever made a third one, I really want a. Jonah Hill and the other guy, Channing Tatum, I really want them to go and be cops in China. And they're like, this is a really <laughs> terrible idea, but there's so much money. They paid us so <laughs> much money to come and be cops in China. <laughs> we couldn't not do it. This this is how policing, I mean, movies get made these days. Uh, that would be pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's my pitch. Look, J Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum... Uh, Lord and Miller, the guys who do those movies, look, you know, that, that's a free one. You can have that one. I just want to see that movie. <laughs> what, what, what would they call it? Uh, 21, uh, the, one was 21 Jump Street, one was 22 Jump Street. I guess it would be whatever 23 Jump Street is in Chinese. Like, it would just be written in Chinese characters. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure it would have, like, some Asian mistranslation, like... Uh, uh, incompetent police force, funny fat man, handsome man, <laughs> fight for great justice. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, your title. <laughs> now, hey, speaking of Deadpool, and believe it or not, that's actually how we started this conversation. Uh, we talked about the Disney acquisition, what that could possibly mean for them. And it seems that one of the casualties of this deal is something that a lot of people might not remember. So you might have recalled that Donald Glover was actually working on a Deadpool animated series that was going to air on FX. Yeah, well, that's dead now. Yeah, that, uh, apparently FX and him have split due to... Or him, FX, and I think Marvel have split due to creative differences. Mm -hmm. And I think it was mainly more like Marvel and FX splitting because I know Donald has like... Uh, what's that show that he has on FX? Um, oh, in Atlanta. Yeah, he's got that, and that makes him a lot of money, and that makes mm -hmm. the studio a lot of money, so they wouldn't have any problems with what he did. I, was, I imagine it's probably more Marvel, and maybe it mm -hmm. didn't fit in with what they wanted to do with the movies as well. Probably. I'm sure there's a lot of different factors at play here, which is a real shame, because I would have loved to seen what a Donald Glover yeah. Deadpool show would have looked like. Yeah, it, it probably would have been pretty cool and pretty out there. Deadpool is so perfectly suited for adult animation, it's a real shame they never tried to get anything off the ground with him. Yeah, I'm really shocked that like something hasn't happened with that character. He's stable of characters before. Mm -hmm. And as FX has shown with Archer and all that other stuff, there is an audience out there for adult animation. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, real, real shame. Oh well. C'est la vie, who knows what will happen down the line for that show. Uh, next up here, we have some more news. This came out of WonderCon, and it actually answered a question that I have been screaming about forever. It seems like the universe opened up and finally answered my damn question, and that is, hey, now that Benjamin Percy is off Green Arrow, who's going to be taking this book now? Because we've got two full filler arcs all lined up with writers that I haven't really heard of before, but it's been announced that the Bensons are going to be taking it over. Julie and Shauna Benson, of whom you may recall, uh, were writing Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. I don't know if they're still writing Batgirl and the Birds of Prey, but they were. Yeah, this is quite interesting. I can't remember. and like I, I read like the first couple of issues of Birds of Prey, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they, they were pretty good pretty good they're books enjoyable. And, and they're pretty similar to like what, what was happening in the in the green arrow books at the moment um so yeah yeah it's pretty cool yeah the, i think the thing that killed birds of prey well, i say killed it it kept going on and people clearly kept buying it so i don't know what i'm talking about but uh the art the art was a little bit of a downgrade mm -hmm. to all the other bat family of books but yeah they're going to be taking over green arrow and judging by the cover alone they seem to be setting him up with an interesting antagonist, and that is Amanda Waller in the Suicide Squad. He seems to be fighting in the first arc. 
yeah the, when i saw this i think ah saying like here's the part where green arrow kind of joins the dc universe whereas yeah. this benjamin percy run really was kind of just uh isolated, isolated isolated to star city and just his stable of characters this is where he starts to branch out a little bit yeah i, I like the idea of green arrow being a bigger player you know kind of getting to hang out in the bigger universe and i think amanda waller is a perfect foe for green arrow to fight because she represents more or less everything that's wrong with governmental corruption and you know like you know uh all the dirty backroom deals and you know uh pay for play politics and all this other stuff she in many ways she's kind of the anti-green arrow and i think that that would be really interesting to see them tackle that especially too because she has an army of like prisoners that are held up it would be kind of cool to see them maybe tackle a like you know uh what is it prisoner abuse storyline heck uh that script that was floating around forever green arrow supermax wouldn't it be crazy to see green arrow go in undercover to the suicide squad in bell rev prison that'd be pretty cool see the story writes itself already and i'm already super interested yeah that i i'm actually surprised she hasn't been used before like i would have thought she would have been embroiled with that whole ninth circle storyline benjamin percy did that maybe they will because that's the thing it's like hey every terrorist group every super villain every bad person who needs money they get a loan from the ninth circle so yeah if waller needs some money yeah probably <laughs> but yeah so good on them i'm interested to see what they do with that book but you know what that that wasn't the only big dc announcement we got some more coming down the pipeline uh of course justice league no justice is the upcoming very soon big weekly justice league series that's going to completely rejigger the universe and rejigger the team and try and make justice league the book you need to read again under scott snyder and greg capullo well guess what apparently they're not stopping there apparently we have two new justice league books that are also going to be spinning out of this justice league dark yes justice league dark is coming back everybody Yeah, I know you were a big fan of this, although this is unlike any Justice League Dark team you've ever seen before. It's going to be helmed by James Tynan, and it looks like Wonder Woman is going to be the leader of this one. Yeah, I think there, there was a t- part in like the old Justice League Dark book where she was originally going to be part of it, or like involved right. in a lot of their plots, but um, I don't think that ever happened. So yeah, and it kind of yeah. make, makes sense since she does deal with like magical foes and stuff like Mm -hmm. that more so than like batman or superman everyone was quick to say hey how come constantine isn't on the team only for james tynan who has written a constantine run in the past to say on twitter no 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 no, no. i promise he's going to be a big part of it just because he's not on the team doesn't mean he's not going to be a big part of justice league dark i think they they plan to make him like a um uh, yeah like a liaison or something which is perfect for john constantine since he's never pegged me as a team player no, no, he doesn't really seem like a team guy, even though he's going to be joining the Legends of Tomorrow for season four of that <laughs> show, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Zatanna is going to be the, on the team because, I mean, hey, if you're making a paranormal DC team, obviously you need Zatanna. So yay for that. Kind of boo for her new costume. She was wearing her classic one. Now they've kind of redesigned it again and made it closer to like New 52 Zatanna or like the Zatanna from that dark uh, Justice League movie they made. Yeah, this, yeah, it looks a bit weird. I was really hoping that she'd just stay with her classic costume that we'd seen her in in like Trinity and Batman and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, apparently not. I, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to modernize it. They're trying to split the difference and be like, no, 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 no. That's, that's her show clothes. You know, that's when she's like a stage magician. This is her actual super fighting gear where she's got a trench coat and instead of wearing fishnets on her legs, she has fishnet gloves. And I'm like, that's not the same and you know it. <laughs> Stop fighting it. Just do the costume everyone likes and everyone likes to cosplay. Come on, come yeah, on. yeah. Uh, Detective Chimp is going to be on the team. Apparently, ever since Dark Knight Metal, it's been decided that Detective Chimp is the new big thing in DC. <laughs> yeah, didn't he die in Metal? Uh, I think he was. They implied that he might have been killed, but clearly he makes it out okay. Okay, then I'm I'm hyped for that. I like Detective Chimp. He's pretty cool. I like him. T- I think it's because he got so popular in Injustice is why they're trying to raise yeah. his profile in the main universe. Which man good on fucking injustice that it can move the dial like that. <laughs> it's done a couple of things like that for characters yep 
Uh, Man Bat is going to be on the team. And, you know, it's funny. This is coming fresh off the heels of Tynan having Clayface join the Bat family and be kind of this sympathetic character that people loved and related to. Uh, he's doing it with Man Bat now. Yeah, let's see if Kurt Langstrom gets the same treatment. I'm sure he will. And Kurt Langstrom, much like Clayface and Mr. Freeze and a lot of these other Batman villains, falls into that role of like, well, why are you a bad guy? Because I'm a bat and I don't <laughs> want to be a bat anymore. Oh, okay. We should probably help you not be a bat. <laughs> now, I, I wonder if, um, much like like phase one of DC Rebirth, whether this new phase will continue with the teasing of like Doomsday Clock stuff because he, mm-hmm. Man Bat's referenced in that as one of those heroes that are part of, they were like made by the government or something. Indeed. In yeah, Superman is that going to be a thing? Yeah, and like here's the thing, like Man Bat as it stands in canon, I think he's one of those guys, much like Clayface, who kind of got fucked around in the new 52 where it's like, what is even his origin anymore? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so they, they've got a little bit of room there to work with. They do. And lastly, and certainly not leastly, uh, what is it? Swamp Thing is on the team, and Swamp Thing has gotten himself a brand new redesign. Yeah, he looks like Alan Moore. He looks like Alan Moore now, as everyone was quick to say. I would love to have been a fly on the wall in Alan Moore's cave if someone sent him a picture of that, and he's like, oh, hey, look, Alan, Swamp Thing looks like you now. I would love to hear his reaction. Oh, Swamp Thing was always me. You didn't know that. I'm actually an <laughs> elemental, and I've always been an elemental. <laughs> they're just they're just rotting the truth now is what they're doing. <laughs> well, hey, you know, this actually makes a lot of sense because in, like, maybe the last Tom King Batman story you and I really liked, uh, we saw Swamp Thing trying to avenge his biological father, and, oh, look, his biological father looks exactly like Alan Moore. <laughs> So now he's just resembling his father, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, everyone. That's uh, that's Dark Knight. Definitely going to give it a look. I think this one might this might be the one Justice League Dark book that makes it because we've had several Justice League Dark books in the past before, but they've never quite made it. Yeah, yeah. They've they've always gotten to like a certain certain issue. They've gotten to double numbers, and then yeah. like it just suddenly just drops, and no one really cares about the book anymore. And yeah, which is a shame because the last run during the New 52 was actually really mm. good. Magic in the DC universe is just such a hard nut to crack, it seems. Yeah, yeah. To think Marvel has such an easier time with Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch and everything else. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why they why they find it so hard. I, I don't know why either, man. Uh, maybe it's because in Marvel they have the whole chariot of the gods theory they work off of where it's like oh well all magic is actually sci-fi and all magic actually comes from space so think of it in that context where in the DC universe it's like where does magic come from yeah and and there's always writers trying to like come up with stuff like oh that we have the green and the red and the yeah. rot and all this other stuff and yeah I could which, see that which being wasn't... really hard which, which was an excellent idea when it started, but you could tell other writers felt stifled by it, where it's like, whoa, 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 wait, so so magic is really uh, an end result of these bio-matrixes that include the red and the green and the rot. Okay, but there's also, like, the wind and the fire and all this other stuff. It's like, okay, well, now we're getting to elemental magic, and you know what? Ah, fuck it, flip the table, start over. <laughs> Uh, The other book we have is Justice League Odyssey, or you might as well call it Justice League Sci-Fi, because that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. This team uh, looks to be seemingly led by either Starfire or Cyborg. I don't know which one. Starfire is more prominent on here, and she was leading the Teen Titans, so she's the leader. (laughs) Oh, well, it could always be Darkseid. It could always be Dark Side. Dark Side, who's also gotten a pretty slick redesign. Now this this is the Dark Side baby, right? From Wonder Woman, all grown up. I I, I have no idea. The thing is, in this one, I don't like his redesign in this because it, it makes him look like he's from a boy band. Um, <laughs> he he looks way too young, especially in like the Wonder Woman book where he's literally like like the older Dark Side, like the one we've seen in like the New Fifty Two, right. the the proper looking Dark Side. Yeah. This one doesn't look... In, this one looks like Ronan the Accuser. He, oh my god, he really does. How did I not see <laughs> that? He totally looks like Ronan the Accuser now. Oh, he's got the blue skin. Fuck, Matt, you nailed it. Give Matt a cookie. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like... I don't. Maybe it's just because I don't really... 
like that artist's art because his art all looks mm-hmm. the same. Um, yeah, a lot of faces. it might might look better in someone in different art and with like more color or something. I don't in in an actual yeah. pa- comic panel or something. But yeah, yeah I don't yeah, like yeah. the design of it. Uh, Cyborg also with a bit of a new redesign. Hey, I've got scale mail parts now, and you can see how my musculature works. That'll be the third redesign he's had in like a year. <laughs> Dude, I think I man, that's a video. How many times have they redesigned Cyborg in the last couple of years? <laughs> it, it's like they think, man, we really can't make him work on the Justice League. Where there's really no sense to be made of this young guy hanging out with all these old people he has nothing in common with. What do we do? What's a good story we can focus on him about? Uh, fucking redesign him again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. On the upside, though, he's at least hanging out with Starfire now, so he's at least that much closer <laughs> to his Teen <laughs> Titans friends than ever before. <laughs> I I like Starfire's outfit, too. She's kind of got, like, the leggings, and she's got some armor on her shoulder. She looks very regal and very royal, and I'm like, yeah, you're a princess, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you should be a little regal and a little royal. Uh, Asriel, of all people, is going to be on this team. <laughs> Why would you put Asriel on a Justice League team? <laughs> Uh, and, and not only Asriel, but like he's back to being Bat Asriel now. I guess that's his space suit, but he kept the flaming sword and everything else now. Yeah, it's so strange. I am more than anything fascinated to see what John Paul uh, John Paul Valley is going to be like on this team. Because if you know from his character, he's he's a religious fundamentalist. Even when he's a good guy, he's like, oh, I believe in God and the Bible and all this other stuff. Well, John, here is a robot man, an alien princess, a space cop, a dark overlord who lives outside time and space. Now, I'm not saying their very existence completely and utterly disproves a Judeo-Christian god that you believe in, but they pretty much all disprove the existence of your god. (laughs) Also, you're going to be out in space, and guess what? Out in space, especially out in DC's cosmic space... You're going to see a lot more things that disprove your god. Hey, here's the new gods. Here's High Father. <laughs> here's some giant blue hand. <laughs> here's a giant blue hand. Man, it's going to be interesting to just have his faith be smacked in the face. <laughs> oh, and also Jessica Cruz is on this team, but seemingly not Baz. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, they're split, starting to split them up because I know on the actual Justice League team, um, it's more animated series sort of roster with john stewart sort of taking the place yeah. of just as the green lantern and i have no idea what's happening with baz but jessica's well, on it, this team alone now well it looks like a bunch of characters are going to be pulling double duty because cyborg is going to be on the main justice league too wonder woman's going to have her own book she's going to be on the justice league and in this so i mean is everyone just going to be pulling double triple duty now on multiple teams <sighs> maybe that the, the interesting thing as well about jessica being on this team is it kind of gives us a point of like maybe her green lanterns book might be ending because the whole point of that book is those two have to work together because they're together. tied they're tied together by the same lantern yeah that's the idea i mean i i hope they don't get rid of the green lanterns book i've always really liked that that one existed especially as someone who was a lax green lantern fan that was kind of my way to get into it and be like oh okay they've slowed it down for someone like me and also that's the crime fighting superhero book well hal jordan and the green lantern corps is all like you know cosmic space opera green lantern rickita rackita yeah yeah they've, they've got, found a good footing with those two books they found a very nice balance uh, to those definitely unless they want to move it around and be like okay now green lanterns is going to be about Jon Stewart for the next year. We're going to try rocking with that and see what happens. Well, again, he's in, like, Hall of Jordan, and, like, does that mean he leaves him, He leaves being Corpse Commander and comes to Earth and Hal becomes the Corps Commander or something? I don't know, man. There's a lot of unsureness going on right now with DC. Like, again, I give them the benefit of the doubt. The DC Rebirth era of the last two years has been pretty stellar, but they're, make, they're kind of making some choices now that make me think they're like, ah, we can do no wrong, whatever. <laughs> Char- characters will just be whatever, doing whatever they want. It's fine. People won't care. Yeah, but they do, though. Comic fans care a lot, though. <laughs> also, I find it really hilarious, and you probably noticed this too, Matt, where it's like DC and Marvel both kind of had the same problem with Justice League and Avengers, where it's like, okay, here's our flagship team book, the thing that should always be great. 
but it hasn't been great for the last couple years. And to see how they've handled that problem in two different ways, where Marvel is kind of like, okay, cancel all these superfluous Avengers books. No more Uncanny, no more USA Avengers. We're going to double down on one big, strong Avengers book. Meanwhile, at DC, they had the exact opposite thing. They're like, okay, we'll get... We'll double down, we'll have Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo do whatever they want, have an epic Justice League run that, you know, everyone's going to want to buy, and also diversify the team and have two other teams running around <laughs> at the same time. That way there's a book for everyone and a great book everyone should want to read. And I'm like, but guys, but they just, and you now, and okay, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, and also they've made the Justice League book weekly now, much like how Avengers is now weekly. <laughs> right yeah so there's kind of a lot of like are, are you guys looking off each other's tests again because it feels <laughs> like you're but well you're always technically looking off each other's tests but the timing is funny yeah yeah I, I mean hey super excited for these books gonna see what happens it just it just seems a little it seems a little suspect is all i'm saying yeah. I'm like this 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 could go either way guys don't don't get cocky kid just because you had two amazing years don't get cocky <laughs> no no don't get cocky no, no, no. And hey, from the adult super teams, we go to some big news about the teen superhero team. And that is that Adam Glass, yes, TV's Adam Glass. I don't watch any of the shows he writes, but people tell me he writes television. Uh, he's going to be helming the new Teen Titans book with a completely revamped roster. We're going to have Damian Wayne sticking on as the Robin. Uh, Imiko Queen, who has now fully taken the mantle of Red Arrow, and Wally Kid Flash 2 are going to be sticking around, but they have three new heroes, Matt. Three brand new ones joining. Yeah, I'm surprised Wally's staying around, especially after the recent, like, Deathstroke stories and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Wally is kind of adrift at the moment. I don't even know what's happening to him in the Flash book, but apparently him and Wally, they got that whole Flash War thing yeah. coming up. Yeah, Wally, w Wally's in a weird place right now. It's like once they got redheaded Wally back, no other writer knew what to do with him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he kind of serves the purpose of whoever's writing him at the moment. But yeah, so uh, we got a blue tubby kid called Roundhouse. Okay. Get it? <laughs> get 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 it? Cause he's fat. Cause he's fat. <laughs> He's a roundhouse. It's a, it's a character for all you damn chubby kids out there. Like me? Yeah, like you. <laughs> like you talking right now. Uh, again, we know very little about these characters or what these what their deal is. But yeah, so we got Roundhouse. Uh, Jin, who I, I'm assuming is a Middle Eastern-themed character because, you know, you got the name Jin, which is like the where the word genie comes from. Mm-hmm. Are, are, are they going to be an actual genie? Are they going to grant three wishes? Are they going to live in a bottle? Are they one of those, like, monsters called a, a djinn? Yeah, yeah. Are, are we going Dungeons & Dragons rules right here? <laughs> don't don't make a deal with a djinn? I don't know. <laughs> and then, finally, perhaps the most, uh, the, the one that drew the most uh, eyes to it, uh, Lobo's daughter, Crush. Yeah, they finally figured out how to work another edgy, young Lobo <laughs> character into the DC universe. <laughs> It, 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 yeah, Matt, but it's, but but it's an edgy goth girl though, so it's so it's not annoying. It's hot. I mean, it's annoying. I mean, it's hot. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Yeah, and also she's cosplay friendly. How about oh, that? <laughs> very cosplay friendly, and it's funny. A lot of people are like, you know, uh, why would they do that? Why would they completely revamp the Teen Titans team? Uh, they actually did it a lot back in the day they would get rid of all the heroes you know and try out some new ones there was a actually a pretty famous run that lasted for a bit where they kicked out robin and starfire and kid flash and all the ones you remember and basically launched like a bunch of new heroes there was like a, a, an african guy who did fire and a few other characters and uh <laughs> <laughs> and, and we don't and we don't see those characters anymore i was i was actually going to research that before we did the show so i could have some more to talk about but i don't i don't actually remember what those characters are <laughs> that's how memorable they were <laughs> they, they weren't that memorable no one really did anything about it. the big the big thing with that is that at the end of that story like their their handler you found out was actually omen who's on the titans team currently so that was something yeah yeah, it was very like you know, like Teen Titans New Generation. Yeah, they they used to switch them. They they used to switch them more than the Suicide Squad. 
they they really did and so you know for anyone out there who ever complains and being like oh you know marvel's n new line of young heroes dc's line of new heroes man they're never gonna make it you know they're never gonna <laughs> be relevant they're already more relevant than the ones of the past yeah yeah. Like, like, here's the thing. All those characters people usually complain about, they got cartoons and movies and multiple guest spots and everything. <laughs> These, the, Those Teen Titans of the past whose names literally escape me at the moment, and they didn't get that. <laughs> so, hey, you know, good good luck for Adam Glass. Once again, this is a person, you know, from, from the realm of TV that they're tapping for this. And that can always go, you know, one of two ways where it's like, you know, either they try and write it like a TV show and slowly over time they have to learn to write it like a comic. So, you know, wish, wishing Adam the best of luck. Yeah, it could, yeah, as you said, it could go either way. It could be a really good book, could be a really bad book. Yeah. It's it, it's uh, again. If I may quote Dodgeball, and I did this on Twitter, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> it's a it's a very bold thing. It, at least they're splitting the difference. I'm sure that that was something they had to talk about in the boardroom. Where it's like, well, let's do a Teen Titans book that's just all new characters. No, 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 we can't do that. Okay, well, just Robin uh, teaching a team of new characters. No, 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 no. Just what about? Okay, three old characters and three new ones. <laughs> This, this also makes me wonder, what about Aqualad, though, guys? Eh, eh. D just, <laughs> does no one care about Calder anymore? Because he seems to be a man without a nation at the moment. No other book booked him up by the looks of it. Is he going to go join the Aquaman book? Is Arthur going to know he exists now? Pe people don't care about him because Young Justice is, isn't on at the moment. See, that's the thing. See, that further strengthens my idea that, okay, so you're keeping Calderon in reserve because when Young Justice Season 3 eventually comes back and it's going to come back, you're going to want him free to make a new Young Justice book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would only probably. make sense, right? Probably. And we'll, prob and we'll probably see Miss Martian again, and they'll either put Tim on that team because, again, Tim never went back to the Teen Titans. His friends are like, where the fuck did Tim go? Yeah, he just kind of, like, abandoned them. <laughs> he just kind of abandoned them. So I uh, maybe they'll put him on the team to make it more reflexive of the Young Justice show. Or, I mean, I, I, I don't know, maybe they'll have Dick on that team because Dick also seems to be a man without a nation right now. Is, is the Titans team going to continue? I think that's ending with no justice. Okay. Or, or ending like just before no justice because they all sort of combine into that a little bit yeah and then i think after that they'll go from there i guess i don't know I they, they, can't ju they they also have to reference like like where's connor where's okay see that was the other thing if you want to make it like the young justice tv show you're gonna need to finally answer the question where the hell is connor kent the superboy or more uh to make it more clean you'll probably just put john on that team yeah, well, I know, well, obviously, Super Sons is ending, and, yeah, we could see see him join them, or, like, join a, a Titans team. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Damien will get him in on his team, since he doesn't have all the members telling him John can't be on the team. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing I hope they really settle before all that is said and done. What about that evil future that Tomasi kept talking about with the Batman Damien of Earth-666? Yeah. Six, six, six? And like the Superboy who gets super flare powers and threatens to kill everybody, is that future just not going to happen anymore? Because it seems like that's what Tomasi was working up to across Super Sons and Titans and everything else. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I know that obviously because that involved the, um, the older Tim, and we, we're getting like in in his in um the last couple of issues of detective like hints that maybe the general might show him that future so yeah we could get more answers to that but yeah the, there were, i can't remember what issue it was but yeah there was just that one page of like damien in as the future batman and it was just yeah. a one random page from the future and then that was it and never never referenced again never referenced again i hope they reference it because that seemed like a cool story and i really don't want these books to be done before they actually finish that off and talk about that yeah well maybe like they could go it through in real time to the future or just or these books might jump maybe after doomsday clock or something yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, because Doomsday Clock is so far in the future. If if they do do a Young Justice book, who would you like to write it? I would like Tomasi to write it. 
I would like Tomasi a lot to write it to. <laughs> would would it be funny if Bendis wanted it? Because Bendis <laughs> is all about the young heroes recently, because he's a father now with kids that you know they want uh, characters to look up to. I think it would be hilarious if Bendis like give me a piece of that Young Justice. <laughs> I'll make it like Champions. <laughs> I'll make it like Champions, which he never wrote. But yeah, wouldn't that be the thing? Because yeah, y- you'll notice this across this news where it's like, huh, you're really pushing new young hip diverse heroes and everything. Are you? Are you guys jealous of what Marvel is doing with Champions? Are you guys are you guys feeling the pressure on that one? Because like people love to say angry people online, like, oh, Champions doesn't sell, and Champions says blah 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 blah. Here's the thing: it's making big inroads elsewhere, though. It's a huge social media thing. It has the eyes of young people on it. Young people are reading Champions. They are interested about those heroes. As much as I love Titans, I don't think you could say that young people were super into any version of the Titans that's going on at the moment. Yeah, and, and you have to wonder, all this news kind of came out after Bendis moved over from DC, so you wonder if maybe he had like a like a hand in saying, oh, we need a, more young heroes. Yeah, you got to build for the future or something. I mean, truth be told, DC launched one new young hero pretty solidly, and his name is Jonathan Kent, the Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that was but done with care and time. <laughs> a lot of care, a lot of time, and also, he's the son of Superman. He was going to get a free ride no matter what he was. Yeah, he was a, a legacy character. He wasn't like he wasn't like Riri Williams, how it was just no. some random girl who associated with, with Tony Stark for a little bit yeah they, they didn't build him from scratch he was already basically there yeah but yeah good good luck adam glass uh, the is the 100 the show he writes or is it supernatural i don't watch young people tv i don't even know what he writes <laughs> he, he writes something he's a tv writer but hey you know what from tv writers to comic writers our next piece of news here uh crazy uncle frank miller is apparently penned a deal to write no less than five uh <laughs> no. what is it uh f- five books uh w- one of them was of course a uh, superman year one that we talked about but apparently uh one of the other books in this five deal that he inked is also a young adult n- original graphic novel starring carrie kelly <laughs> oh because everyone wants that when I think of crazy old Frank Miller, I, of course, think young adult. <laughs> I think this is a man who really speaks he's, the language he, of millennials. Man, he is hip. He's with the kids. He's he's he, he, he's freaking that great meme of hello, fellow children from Not Another Team Movie. <laughs> he literally he's, is. <laughs> he's that guy, only way scarier. Yeah, and a bit, uh, you know, more racist. <laughs> more racist he wouldn't be like hello fellow children and be like what's up fucking children yeah. this is a lot of brown people this this is so strange for them to do this especially after the reaction uh dark knight 3 got and like his his more recent work has gotten they they, they already paid him the money matt they can't stop him now <laughs> Also, too, uh, an original graphic novel with no chaperone, you're telling me? No Azarello, no one to watch him? I He's can't unchained. Wait no Unchained. Man, I can't wait for this project to come out over the next three years. Uh, you're being too kind, more like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be yeah. releasing them after he's long dead. <laughs> they or, found or him maybe... in his bomb shelter or something. <laughs> or, or maybe like All-Star Batman and Robin, maybe it'll just never come out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe it will just never come out wow what a what a terrible idea someone said okay so young adult original graphic novel starring carrie kelly written by frank miller those those words do not compute when you put them together look i i i know he invented carrie kelly i'm sure he has a certain affinity for the character but you know maybe maybe let someone else have a crack at that you know just maybe yeah she she's gonna be like a prostitute or something i know it I mean, as we've shown, well, it's, you would say that, but like Carrie Kelly seems to be like the last female character that Miller kind of cares about in a weird way. Like maybe she's based on someone he knew. Maybe she like has something in her that he likes for whatever reason. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't want to read that. Ain't no one got time for that. Yeah. The the, the good thing though, the, the silver lining in this, these are all basically that black label so they're not in continuity no. so don't have to worry Mary. about them <laughs> remember carrie kelly was in continuity for like a minute yeah. and the fans just booed it down super hard yeah no one gave a shit 
No, no one gave a shit until they gave too much of a shit and booed it down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's original graphic novel news, everybody. Uh, the next little bit of news here we got going on, and this will be the last story before we hop into what we read this week. Uh, Chris Captain America Evans says he's done with these movies after Avengers Four. Makes sense. He extended his contract from. He was, I think, originally meant to end after Infinity War, but he extended it to include Avengers Four. Mm-hmm makes sense that's like the end of like their phase it's true which you know you would hope by then they would be ready to do you know the next generation yeah well they they really are they're like building them up already with spider-man doctor strange uh scarlet witch all those characters the guardians uh bucky even perhaps captain america can get his big heroic death and bucky can become cap like he did in the comics yeah maybe and hey you know if they feel that maybe they do need him to stay that he's just too good an ambassador chris evans and he really really is you would hope that they would do what they always do in those situations and they would drive the dump truck full of money up to his house and be like hey you want to stay on a little longer i i don't know whether he'd accept because i i i read like an article recently where like when he first accepted it he had to like go to therapy to to like (laughs) figure out if he wanted to accept it because he has anxiety about these sorts mm-hmm. of things and i find that really ironic that he's an actor and has anxiety about acting uh, um, uh, well I, I mean for a big project like this it's not like oh yeah it's a movie that's like a that'll be like six months of your life and filming yeah, a couple and years. And yeah like being captain america is a huge commitment not just because you're going to be part of this big universe but also hey you're Captain America. You got to be a good guy in real life too, because if we find you drunk driving or beating up prostitutes, that's gonna look <laughs> really bad on us. That Captain America did that. <laughs> you can do it now because he's a war criminal. So <laughs> there you go. Hey, he's a war criminal or some shit. Now I don't know. No, Captain America didn't do those things. No man did those things. No man <laughs> did though. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like I'd like to, for him to like like they say like okay you, you're done with these movies but if we need you to come back for like some like a movie a little long way down the line you can yeah be be the elder statesman of the marvel cinematic uh, universe yeah i think that that'd be pretty cool but i think maybe they they probably might kill him off i mean it would be a pretty bold statement as it was a pretty bold statement in the comics as well when they did it yeah of course it'd be a bit different in the movies but it might even be better in the movies yeah yeah, we won't, we won't do the weird time travel bullet and the, you know, his girlfriend Sharon was mind controlled for a bit there. That that was a whole thing. Great story when Ed Brubaker tells it. Might not work in the movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, g- great comic book story. Just don't know if they could adapt it right. But yeah, they're, they're starting to sort of build up these these younger heroes. We've got Captain Marvel coming out. Um, did you see the Captain Marvel casting news? No, I didn't actually. What was that about? Uh, Coulson is back. In the, nice, in it. as it should. Um, uh, Ronan the Accuser is back. Sweet, yeah, yeah, because we're going back in time um, now. We can so, see these guys again. so is that other guy, uh, his henchman from Guardians. Oh, T- um, Tanalath the Pursuer. Yeah, yeah, Tanalath, Korath, or whatever his name is. Yeah. Korgoth the Barbarian. Yeah, that yeah, guy. yeah, the Conan the Barbarian. That guy. <laughs> Man, now that's a cameo for Captain Marvel <laughs> going in the Barbarian shows up. <laughs> no one saw it coming. Uh, but the, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. We're getting, I guess, Ronan again as a villain. As, cool. as one of the villains. I mean, it makes sense. We can see him back, you know, when he was a firm believer in the Kree Empire, when he was just a cog in the machine before it all goes wrong and you know he becomes like weird space osama bin laden <laughs> yeah becomes a weird space racist <laughs> there you go ah f- fuck xandar <laughs> f- fuck those novas who are both a core and a race in this but maybe not i don't know <laughs> yeah but i'm glad colson's back in the movies yeah hopefully. even if please, it's a please. flashback <laughs> Even if it's just a flashback, okay, cool, you're back in the movies, so so he can stay now, right? We can finally have the Avengers. <laughs> he, he can finally come back out of hiding and meet the Avengers again. Although maybe he can't, because they're implying now in the last season of Shield he might be dying all over again. <laughs> that hey, that apparently that extra time he had and everything there that was uh, that that was temporary. No one gets to live forever. No one gets to cheat death completely. Yeah. 
which I guess would be like a very like continuity keeping nerdy way of doing it being like yeah he lived but he lived in secret as a super spy and the Avengers didn't even know of all the good he did to save them and save the planet Earth yeah he was a secret Avenger he was a super secret Avenger like the secretist <laughs> Because in a way, doesn't that make him more badass? They you know he could have told them at any point, but he didn't want to because the mission was more important. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice if May or Daisy or someone could be like, yo, he was alive, though. <laughs> That's how they just say it when they meet, like, Captain America. <laughs> he was alive, man. <laughs> man, you don't even know how alive he was. We had so many adventures. We went to the future. <laughs> we met he got a Ghost robotic Ryan. heart hand, and it had a shield in it. And... <laughs> It was sick as fuck, and you don't even know. <laughs> he went to space. He went to another planet and fought a hive monster. <laughs> he had so many adventures. He had like five seasons worth of adventure. <laughs> Is what they'll say. Oh god. <laughs> uh, and never, and he never picked up the phone once in all that time. No. That's that's a true. That's a true hero there, Matt. That's a true OG. <laughs> Uh, I haven't watched the new episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. yet, but I should. This mm. this latter half of this season is getting quite interesting. They're building their own Thunderbolts. This this issue, uh, this, this episode was really good. A really good episode from uh, Fitz. He had a really, really nice. good arc in this episode. Fitz, probably one of the best characters overall that they've done in terms of development between seasons. Oh, yeah. You look at him in like season one and compare him to him now. They're like night and day. Oh, yeah, they're barely the same person. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess with that, we can hop on over to what we read this week. Cool. cool, cool. Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a lighter week, but, you know, that's good. I enjoy the lighter weeks sometimes to keep my sanity in check. Yeah, yeah, they're good for that. They absolutely are. Uh, I'll let you go first, Matt. What did you read that you want to talk about? Uh, let's talk about Superman, issue 43. Yeah. Yeah, more more Boyzaro and the Boyzaros. Yeah, this was a really fun issue. This is it was Superman and Bizarro and Boyzaro and Superboy and traveling to the Cube World of Bizarro. All this really cool stuff. Um, I, I what I found really really weird was that I was getting a lot of comics of pe people being angry at the dialogue, and I don't Yo, think they, yeah. I don't think they realize that Bizarro speaks in opposites he speaks backwards because everything is the opposite on that world i got the same thing i'm like has it really been that long since we've had an actual real deal official bizarro story that people don't know how to read bizarro speak anymore are we just old yeah. nerds matt who know how to do that i i think i think we are but I, I i i thought the exact same thing and i went back and yeah it's it's been a while since we had a proper bizarro story mm. Me, me, me say those people uh, not privileged in way <laughs> to have not do this, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun stuff. I, I like, it's like, it's not enough we just had boy Zara, we get to see Bizarro World Damien Wayne as well. Yeah, Rob Zara. <laughs> Rob Zara. With his little mustache. <laughs> oh, his little Pepe Le Pew French mustache. That's a stroke of brilliance because obviously main universe Damien Wayne is an emotional cripple who can never tell anyone that he loves them, can never show any emotion. He's just like a little little robot psychopath. Rob Zaro, though, is just in love with everybody. Yeah. He's basically just committing <laughs> sexual assault all over the place. <laughs> but I'm really glad that they like went the way of like showing that the Bizarros aren't evil. They're just... No people who are misunderstood because they're mirror versions of these characters they are they are completely uh, moral for the universe that they live in it only causes problems when they come over to this world and it's funny that you know boy Zaro is kind of like in a rebellious phase right now and this is how he rebels by going to the main <laughs> universe yeah he's like, fuck you dad and <laughs> i'm going i'm while well, you and mama are having a domestic abuse i'm just gonna go over yeah. this new earth <laughs> Which, again, in Bizarro World, maybe domestic abuse is how we show love. I don't know. <laughs> Everything's backwards. Yeah, it was very strange. But I did like that we got a little bit of a fight between Superman and Bizarro that ended kind of quickly because Superman punched him to the moon. <laughs> yep. Right to the moon, Alice. And I'm like, man, that is the sort of joke Superman would make. <laughs> 
be corny like that. Uh, funny too, we were saying, hey, when's nobody gonna come back? That's a uh, Benjamin or that's a uh, friggin' Patrick Gleason, Tomasi creation. She came back here. Yeah, she's been like working for Superman, and I love that. Keeping an eye on John. Does that mean she knows who Superman is? If she's been keeping an eye on John, I'm gonna say yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> You, you can't do one without figuring out the other and i think that's brilliant to be like man where did nobody go she was an interesting character they clearly had a lot of interest yeah. in her and to be like oh she was always there she was just invisible you didn't know yeah i, I like that that makes me think like, oh yeah she was there for like all this other stuff just keeping an eye on him also hey kathy uh last issue she got a costume this issue she picked a name she's beacon yeah, that's pretty cool. She's becoming sort of her own hero, which makes me think again, like, why isn't she going to be on, like, a Teen Titans or something? She's got some pretty she, good powers. <laughs> yeah, she's like a super awesome alien with her own ship and can clearly open portals to other dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> that seems useful. I would want that on my team. <laughs> Uh, the, the big stinger, of course, at the end of this one is we run into the Legion of Doom of Bizarro World, who are the Legion of Fun. <laughs> yes, and, and their, their grand scheme is to turn the cube Earth into a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That, that's so wonderfully super friends. And I'm like, yeah, of course, the Legion of Fun would be a completely, you know, harmless organization because that's what they do. Yeah, I, I thought that was really cool. And and like the team makeup is really cool. We got like Alex Luther, who's got long flowing hair. We we mm -hmm. got a Sinestro, who's a Green Lantern. Um, Still. Yeah, I, I think there was like Cheetah and ca uh, a, a Captain Cold, which is probably like a it's, fire yeah, version. It's, it's the it's the same lineup from the Super Friends cartoon. Yeah. We even have a, sca a a scarecrow who's not scary. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. That's such a genius idea where it's like, yeah, why have we never seen a bizarro version of the Legion of Doom? I'm amazed it took them so long to do it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I think the next issues are going to be pretty fun. This is um, Tomasi and Gleason's final run as yeah, well. I think they end it on 45. Yes, which is a special extra length issue. Mm. Which, good for them. It's been a hell of a run on all the Superman books. It's going to be sad to let them go. Yeah, but I mean, they got like, what, 45 issues plus a couple of annuals, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah, they had a they had a really solid run there, and you know that was another thing too at WonderCon. Bendis was trying to hype up the new villain for his new run that you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah. Which which again, you know, it's like okay, Bendis, I will take this ride with you. You've proven me wrong before, but I don't like. I think he was concentrating on all the wrong parts when he was selling it. He's like, this villain is so fucking strong. You have no idea how strong he is. He just beats the shit out of Superman because he's so strong. Like <laughs> oh, like doomsday a little bit it's kind of like yeah but we've seen villains who are super strong and are able to beat the shit out of superman on a physical level you need you need a bad guy who can challenge him in a different way yeah you need someone who can challenge him not just physical but mentally as well someone like manchester black it's, that's why I've always loved Manchester Black as a villain, because it's like, look, if you punched me, Superman, I would die, but I can outthink you, I can use my mind powers, I can put up a bunch of different roadblocks between me and you that you don't want to hit me at. I, I go full psychological warfare on you. Yeah, yeah, you need someone who can do that for him, but yeah, just having a villain he can just beat around a city yeah. is, yeah. It's been done. Even yeah. even Mr. Oz was a great villain where it's like, you know, I am a mystery your super brain can't crack. And even when you do figure out who I am, you refuse to admit that I could be who I am. Mm, and it, it took so long for him to figure out that it was him. Yeah. And it shattered his world to figure it out, to be like, oh, God, you know, I can't believe that my dad is this guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, what else was this week? Uh, oh, I guess I'll go next. Uh, oh, hey, we had the final issue of Mighty... Th well, not the final issue, but Jane Foster's final issue of Thor. Ooh, tell me about this. Uh, it was beautiful. It was completely organic. It is a wonderful kind of, like, end of Act 2 to what will no doubt be Jason Aaron's big multi-year, uh, multi-decade almost getting up to there, uh, Thor uh, saga. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm now that that's over. I'm going to go back and read them, um, because I want to pick up the the new Thor book. Because I just I saw the cover for it the other day, and it looks really awesome. 
it is now like if you've been waiting on it now is definitely the time to start so you're up to speed for the next one it's basically like you know uh asgardia is in flames it's heading towards the sun the man gog is beaten odin and odin's son completely senseless Jane is the only one who can challenge the monster, even though to do so will mean she has to transform, and transforming one more time means she's yeah. going to die when she yeah. transforms back. They have themselves a rip-roaring fight all over the place. And what's interesting about it is that, once again, Jason Aaron brings it back to this idea about, you know, the Asgardian gods. You know, do they deserve to be worshipped? Does the universe need gods? Is that a good thing when they seem to be, you know, so so fallible and oftentimes so cruel and unusual? And the Mangog, who up until now has been shown to be like a really, you know, one-dimensional, like, doomsday destructor villain, he kind of opens up to Jane. He's like, look, I, I know you're not a god. I can smell it on you. Why why would you fight for these people when, you know, they've destroyed a whole world, when they destroyed my race, when they'll continue to fuck up and destroy lives? You know, wouldn't you rather just kill them now and end it here? And she kind of thinks about it, and we get this beautiful flashback, and, like, you know, we get all this old artwork from when she first appeared in the comic and everything. It's very it's very much like, uh, like Logan from Death of Wolverine when uh, that doctor asked him, was it all worth it? Yeah. She kind of has her own moment like that. And she's like, you know, you know what the difference is between you and me, man, Gog. You only fight for hate, but I fight for love. You know, love of my planet, love of my friends, you know, even love of Odin's son. And that's why I'm going to beat you. And her and Odin's son, they team up. And because, you know, Asgardia is all broken up and everything, she gets the chains that they chain Fenrir with. Okay. And she yeah. wraps... And she, and she wraps that around the man gog, and she's like, you know, you think you're pretty indestructible. Well, tell you what, I know you aren't going to break those chains. So she wraps it around the hammer, and then she throws it in the heart of the sun. So man gog <laughs> gets taken into the heart of the sun. Of course, even doing so, that means, oh, you sent the hammer away. Yeah. <laughs> that means you're going to change back into human. So she basically sacrifices herself to save Asgardia and save everybody. Ah, uh, that's awesome. It's a badass last stand, and her final words are like, hey, you know, Thor, Odin, be gods worth worshipping. You know, prove prove the man gog wrong. That's awesome. And that's, her, and that's her final thing as she dies. I think there's going to be one more issue that's going to be like the big funeral issue. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was it was a really nice ending to it, and I know it was really nice, and I know it was really well done, because all the people who are still stubbornly still think this is the worst thing in the world, who have been quiet over the last, like, you know, 30-odd issues, all showed up out of the woodwork to be like, good, I'm glad she's dead, this is the worst <laughs> thing ever, marvelous SJW propaganda, burp -burp 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 -burp. and I'm like, yes, continue to hate one of the best-selling, most well-received, critically acclaimed Thor runs of the last decade do mental backflips and tell yourself <laughs> that it wasn't good even though everything speaks to the opposite i remember i i can't remember what it was but i was i it was for i think one of my avengers reviews where i was praising jane foster's thor and people actually like well i got some of those people on my on my video and they, they actually <laughs> thought that marvel had performed a sex change on thor and changed thor odin's son into a woman that's how like that's, a, that's how disconnected these people are and i'm like you know this is a completely different character right this isn't thor odin's son this yeah. is jane foster and they're like oh no they did this you know they performed sex change he's now a transgender thor and i'm like what the hell is going on they're they're disconnected from reality and it's clear these people are angry about lots of things comics just being one of them and yeah. they don't actually read it they, they wait for like you know webcam youtubers with confederate flags behind them to tell them about it and then they go out in the world and get mad about it yeah yeah to where it's just like that's gotta be a difficult way to live but you know just you know stay inside and get angry at your computer be sure to not go near anywhere near like you know uh heavy equipment or a voting booth or a car where you could hurt somebody <laughs> just just keep writing online about how this is the worst thing ever and how things were better back in your day and we'll all be fine yeah uh, another interesting thing about this issue, and we'll move on after this. Remember you and I kept saying, you know, huh, Jane Foster Thor never took her helmet off in this series. But in Mark Wade's Avengers, she took it off several times. And I wondered if Jason Aaron was saving that for something. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, he was actually. Before she dies, she takes the helmet off, and Odinson sees her for the first time with the helmet off. And I'm like, oh, so Aaron was building up to there, but Mark Wade just didn't get the memo apparently, and had her do it several times. Yeah, yeah. She, she in his run, he would, she would just like take her helmet off willy nilly, like, oh, they're just yeah. they're just in the Avengers HQ. I just take the helmet off. Yeah, and they never answered the question too. Where it's like, okay, so with the helmet off, does she just look like Jane Foster with blonde hair? Because mm. my thinking of it was. Because when that Thor showed up, it was a mystery, and we didn't know who she was at first, and that was the whole big thing. I'm like, oh, is is that because the helmet to maintain the mystery? Because without it, she's just Jane Foster with blonde hair, and people would be able to recognize her. They never answered that. No? No, and I don't think they will. Yeah. If if I ever meet uh, Jason Aaron anywhere, I'll ask him that. I'm like, what was the deal with the ha- uh, with the helmet? Were you mad that Wade did it several times before you got a chance to? Because <laughs> like clearly that's a moment. Like how they say in writing, you should you should imagine the ending you want and then work your way backwards. I'm sure that was the ending he wanted to work his way back from. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was it was a solid conclusion. I was very happy with it. That's awesome. All right, what else did you have, Matt? Uh, well, speaking of shitty conclusions, I had Batman issue 43. <laughs> I did too. Oh, boy, what an issue. <laughs> Man, wait, to, like, we were already not on board with this one, but boy, howdy, did this one even find new and interesting ways yeah. to shit the bed. Oh, my God, this one was like, Tommy was like, ah, oh, I don't like my book, eh? Well, I'm just going to double down on stupid shit and throw you Which... off the boat. <laughs> Which, which maybe that's why he was getting so defensive because obviously these are written like a long time in advance so he's like oh no they don't even like issue one of this issue if this new arc man if they don't like issue one they're <laughs> really gonna hate issue 43 also i think i think it also might have been you but like up until now he hasn't really received any proper criticism of his work because no. his other work has been really good but and mm. it's only like until since he got on batman people have been like hey this this is kind of shitty. Yeah, when you break it down. So, but uh, I titled this one "What's Eating Poison Ivy" because that's basically what this is all built around. Like, hey Pam, why are you so mad? Hey Pam, why you take over the whole world? And her reason might be the dumbest reason ever given. Oh God. <laughs> I've taken over the world because humanity is bad. No, not because they're abusing the planet. That would actually make sense and be in keeping with my character. No. I did it because I'm upset because I killed five people during the War of Jokes and Riddles, which was years ago now, yes. but, I'm only getting, but I'm only getting upset about it now. Talk about a delayed reaction, Matt. That, yeah, and there was no none of that. So sort of, I've been planning this for years and getting everything in right orders and everything for this one moment that happened to be this time. There was none of that. There was just, she just decided to one day, like, eh, and control the whole world yeah <laughs> it's just, eh. just just i'm gonna control the whole world but i'm also gonna keep feeding everybody because restaurants are going or maybe i'm only feeding batman and Catwoman. which why would i do that it's not like i'm gonna try and take over their mind because the mind control stuff is in the food but they can't be mind controlled so why am i doing this yeah i i could have just starved them out and killed them and kept controlling the world but i, but I don't know <laughs> But but I don't know if I'm a good guy or a bad guy or not. In fact, in this very issue, I'll say I fought Batman for years of my own accord. But then later on in the same issue, Batman will be like, oh, you were never a villain. Yeah, I think she was, though. <laughs> you just can't say she wasn't oh. and take away all the bad stuff she did. Oh, furthermore, uh, Batman and Catwoman pull off the greatest long-distance combo of all time. Catwoman, or one-punch Catwoman, as she is now. One, one kick man- Catwoman in this issue. Ah, that's right. Manages to knock Poison Ivy out, which is perfectly timed with Batman, who has gotten an audience with Harley Quinn, even though she's a friggin' psychiatrist, not a brain doctor, and he had a brain problem, but whatever. Because if I can get Harley back to normal, then Harley can give poison ivy you're talking to because apparently when a woman gets frazzled all she needs is a good talking to from one of her girlfriends not not just that but that had no importance whatsoever because it wasn't that that stopped poison ivy from taking it was batman suddenly remembering oh yeah riddler actually lied to you he killed those people not you yeah it wasn't you i haven't told you i i i didn't tell you any of this and it's multiple years later i didn't tell you any of this 
Because I'm an asshole. His dialogue is so nonchalant. He's like, oh, yeah, you, 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 this is all about you killing people. Oh, yeah, you, you didn't actually kill those people. Riddler did. And, again, and then they just not, walk off. <laughs> and it's not like Batman hasn't had multiple opportunities to tell Poise and Ivy this. They were on good terms in her miniseries. She was working with Batgirl in the Birds of Prey. <laughs> they could have done it in the opening minutes of this arc and have it not yeah. even do anything. And and again, I like posted it on Twitter. So like she, when she controls people's minds, she finds out stuff. That's how she find out how who Batman yes. was through Alfred. Um, I'm guessing she found out every other one, every other person's secret identity. Um, Absolutely. So why, when she, is she obviously controlled everyone on Earth, so she controlled the Riddler. Why didn't she find out that he was lying? Because we couldn't have had a story that way. And again, like, again in this issue, that they're, they're really like he's really nonchalant with like how her controlling people controls people's powers. Because yes. she 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 controls three Superman family members, one of which whose powers aren't the same as Superman and Supergirls, and are accessed yes. by two gatekeepers. So how does she control his powers and everything? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> nope. But Tom King wanted to tell this story where Poison Ivy felt bad about stuff, and it, it's great too because he also puts in a little plug for his new book Sanctuary, but it's yeah. like, oh hey, where's Poison Ivy off to now? She didn't go to jail, did she? No, she's gonna go to Sanctuary and work out her problems. Read that book, please. Yeah, no. Not not a great plug for your new book, honestly, but the worst part I felt was the slap in the face at the very end where Catwoman's like, wow, Batman, you know, it was just you and me against the world and we overcame the whole world. No, you didn't. Poison Ivy was pulling her punches the whole time. Were you not paying attention? <laughs> Also, uh, what, what what happened to the kid who, like, apparently... Exactly, that had no, was... no relevance to the plot whatsoever. <laughs> The, someone in my chat said that's a red herring i'm like yeah but what happened to him though did poison ivy kill him it's not important none of this is uh, important none of it not only is none of this important but don't you dare ask tom king to explain any of oh, this to you mad. because he'll get very mad and defensive because as a writer it's not his job to explain things yet it totally is <laughs> yeah it's getting the other kind of is and again if you want to tell an open-ended story, that's fine. I'm all about stories that you can read a little into here and there. But don't just pull things out of your ass. Like, again, my favorite ass pull, Batman being like, oh, yes, my, my circuitous scheme to get punched in the head and have Poison Ivy have to get a bunch of head doctors for me, including Harley Quinn. You're here now. I, I bet that your personality is closer to the surface than anyone else's. I bet I can get you back. How? How do you know that? Well, not only that, how did he know, like, like okay, I'm going to get Superman to punch me and kill me? Like, what was stopping Poison Ivy from being like, fuck this, I'm not bringing him back to life, that's one problem out of the way? Yeah, uh, because she's not a villain, she was never a villain, except by her own admission, <laughs> she was a villain! <laughs> Oh my god. And again, it's like, is it because Harley Quinn is Poison Ivy's friend? Is it because she's crazy? There's places you could go with this, but you chose to go nowhere. You chose to pick nothing. Yeah, and again, this issue was like the 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 antithesis of like things happening off screen that yeah. that that are important that we need to see, but Tom King feels like, oh, we don't need to see that detail. Like um, when Bruce and uh, Harley escape the prison, he's confronted by three like of the most powerful beings in mm -hmm. D dc universe and it just cuts to them arriving at at ivy's fortress you know ah, no one wants to see that people want yeah. to see harley quinn and ivy having a heart to heart yeah which doesn't have any effect in their characters anyway also i love to out of all the poison ivy stories and all the interesting poison ivy events that have happened over the last little bit what's what's the bit that tom king chooses to reference oh the thing i wrote of course yeah of course of course not not that not that mini series she had where she was trying to right her wrongs and and, and try and be kids. a better person and everything now i'll just reference the stuff i wrote a couple of issues ago Yes. And I love, too, where, again, it calls into question, yeah, why did Poison Ivy listen to the Riddler when she's so much more powerful than him and she could have killed him and the Joker if she wanted? Why did she just go along with this? 
Yeah, I, and again, it was it was more of that like that Batman Catwoman wank where like they had that conversation where like Catwoman's like I didn't join them because I'm too strong. I I don't let people lead me. Yeah. And, and Poison Ivy's like I'm too weak. I let them lead me and use you, me you and are... whatnot. <laughs> Which, which again, like, okay, so are you trying to make her an abused woman analog? She is literally Mother Earth. <laughs> she can literally, using her pheromone power, she can bend men to her will. <laughs> oh my God, Tom King. Oh my God. And, and, and again, no Swamp Thing. No, and not a single note of Swamp Thing, even though the green a plant life... It's kind of his job. You really dropped the ball here, Swamp Thing. And again, it's not like Tom King doesn't know how to write Swamp Thing. He actually wrote a good Swamp Thing story, and he wrote the Swamp Thing special, and he still never showed up. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Uh, 50 more That's issues. A... <laughs> and 50 more issues, Tom King and Catwoman, and 150 more Szechuan sauces, Catwoman. Oh, God. I hope we get a new writer on this book so soon. It's it's okay, Matt, because as of like issue forty five, I think onwards, it's 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 all wedding. We're building up to the big wedding at issue fifty, uh, which means he gets to write the Joker again. Uh-huh. How's you know, that, how how is Catwoman gonna kill him with like one hit this time? I know, right? Will Kite Man come back? Is Kite Man gonna be the best man at the wedding? I think it only makes sense that Kite Man should be there because <laughs> everyone's really taken with Kite Man. Yeah. He's the success story of this year. You see, he's a funnier character than we've ever had before. So if we get Kite Man working... He's, he's the key to all of this. He's the key to all... Like, literally, for Warp Jokes and Riddles, he was the key to all of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. All right, let's talk about something else. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, Avengers, is you 685? Yes. yes, Iron Hulk Smash. Yeah, this was a really cool book. This was all all Hulk, all Hulk. Very much, so. all Hulk all the time, all green everything. <laughs> yeah, and, and and we learned that this reanimated Hulk comes with new powers. Mm, yes, you can't reach into his brain, and you can't like you know pull a whammy zammy on him there because he's freaking mindless by his own admission. He's mindless, but at the same time, he's very smart. Yes, he can clearly talk and form sentences, and again. People are wondering, you know, is Banner even in there anymore? What's going on? Well, they did they did refer to him as Robert Bruce Banner, aka the Immortal Hulk. So maybe, yeah. um, but also like he he can now like suck the gamma from people, as he yes, did with so Red a, Hulk, and effectively yeah, ended Red Hulk's story because he cured General Maverick of his sickness. Yes. <laughs> This this issue could also very well have been called USA Avengers Last Stand. They kill Pod, they depower Maverick, they embarrass uh, Cannonball <laughs> and the other lady on the team. And I'm like, okay, so they're done now, huh? This was their last hurrah. This was their Waterloo. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, I mean, there's worse ways to be done out than you know, uh, <laughs> what is it? Get beaten by a rampaging Hulk to build him back up. This this was totally a wrestling feud, is what this was. We need to bury the USA Avengers because we need to put the Immortal Hulk over strong for WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> He needs to look really strong going into his title match, and in their defense, he looks really strong. <laughs> yeah. Like this, like this might be one of the strongest is we've ever seen the Hulk. Like the only <laughs> thing I think that can come close is like a World War Hulk. Yeah, yeah. Like he is just walking through heroes, like just no one can touch him. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there's like even Vision. Vision. Vision got a little bit cocky though. He's like, oh, yes, I can, I can deal with it because I've got density powers, and it's like, nope, through the head, <laughs> crush one zero 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 one one one. I'm like, oh wow, he's he's blue screening. Someone reset him. <laughs> please, please tell me you backed up Vision somewhere else, right? He's on a flash drive somewhere. Uh, but yeah, he he just wrecked all of those people. <laughs> yeah, it was really it was really awesome. It yeah. gives me it gives me a lot of hope for that Immortal Hulk book. I'm like, man, I hope it's just like this. Yeah, I hope they don't like they don't water him down in that and he's just like this just force of nature that he should be that just moves through objects. <laughs> they're they're playing him like a slasher villain where it's like, "Oh god, he's Jason Voorhees. He's going to kill you, run." <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh we get a little bit more stuff 
on Voyager and how she's, uh, you know, obviously still the daughter of the Grand Master, but not in love with his plan right now, and she's kind of going into business for herself. Yeah, she's got some plan with the last pyramid since she hasn't brought it to her father yet. Um, mm-hmm. No idea what it, what the plan is and what yeah. it could involve, but yeah, that is, I find it very interesting she's able to, like, keep control of this since... Mm grandmaster is technically the one who puts the pyramids out in the field i mean assumedly her powers are similar to her father's because we can see she can teleport people and matter huge distances i'm guessing she just teleported it i guess so yeah that's that's at least the way i read into it until they tell me otherwise that's how i read it yeah and and quicksilver as well he got like a little part in last issue and this issue where he's like seeing something that's like moving faster than the eye mm. can see or something i wonder if that yeah. might tie into that no surrender quicksilver book Ooh, yes i would be interested to see where they go with that they're definitely trying to build him back up again and again i put money on it quicksilver no surrender we're gonna find out that he and scarlet witch are actually the children <laughs> of magneto still <laughs> are you sure they're not gonna be inhumans <laughs> Hey, hey, everyone! We cured, we cured the fox virus. We're fine now. <laughs> also, too, everyone says that it was like, oh, they made them in humans. No, they didn't. They were creations of the high evolutionary. Yeah. They just, they just rolled the retcon back a little. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like everyone quotes that wrong because everyone just assumed that was going to happen, even I, though they're not right. I, I love how mad it made people. <laughs> It made them mad, and then it ultimately ended up being nothing. They just yeah. rolled the retcon back a bit, and then they're going to roll the retcon forward next time. Be like, did we say that? We were actually full of shit, and here's why. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, this was a fun issue. I like to, in the final panel, oh, who could possibly save the day now for the Avengers in their darkest hour? Oh, don't worry, Wonder Man's got this. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have a talk with the Hulk. Which is <laughs> good. I, I like to... Wonder Man. He doesn't get enough too. credit. <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't. He's a fun character. He's the Bojack Horseman of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a fun one. Definitely excited to see where that one goes from there. I guess uh, for me, I had two books left. I had Super Sons, that was one. That was a good book. It was a fun book, yeah. Get to see uh, Damien duke it out with his mom, Superboy, try and act out in another city as a hero and trying to be like, oh, I guess I should protect my identity, shouldn't I? Yeah, and he's like, oh, I, I really love Gotham. They have ninjas that attack people in the streets. <laughs> they surely, surely do. I love some woman tries to protect him. You leave that little boy alone. Oh, he's superhero. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah it's okay lady i got this yeah I, I like his interaction with lois where lois is like obviously doing like the whole superman thing where they know each other but she's acting but like she doesn't and she doesn't it's so cute she's doing it with her son too oh well you know i'm sure your mother's very worried about you <laughs> and if i was your mother i'd say you know be home by curfew but i'm not your mother though i'm just saying it <laughs> very cute uh Damien has that with his mom. Here's the thing, you know, I'm waiting for a writer to take the whole, you know, Damien Talia feud to the next level because it feels like in the last couple stories they've just hit the same uh same talking points over and over again. Yeah, they they seem to be like, yeah, just sort of rehashing everything when they when they meet each other every couple be of evil. issues. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah be evil. No, yeah. I said no. Yeah, fuck you, mom. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna be evil. I'm gonna be good and wear a costume. But I raised you to be a conqueror. I don't wanna. <laughs> they, they, they did have one pretty badass piece of dialogue in here from Talia when Damien says, "You know, I have a better life now. I have friends." and everything and talia fires back by saying are they your friends damien or are they just not your victims yet <laughs> and i'm like ouch that's foreshadowing that's, that's what i thought i'm like okay so like is this tying into what Tomasi's doing with the future stuff because that sounds like something that would happen even future tim said oh yeah damien fucks it up for everybody <laughs> which that's got to be a lot to deal with oh no no in the future he fucks everybody up yeah <laughs> But yeah, that was the, that was a fun one. That was a short one, but a good one. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. And uh, you have another one because I only have one more. Yeah, well, I got I got two things to talk about. Uh, what well, first one was Justice League issue 41. Oh yes, the continuation of the Super Fan. Yeah, Red Lion joins the the fray. Uh, ah, Chris, Christopher Priest's Black Panther character, which is fine because he invented him in Destro and he wrote Black Panther. Yeah. Uh, 
Red Lion and Deathstroke, kind of. Um, oh, during, nice. During the fight. Yeah, because they know each other and because he writes that book, too. Yeah, the, 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 the Watchtower last issue crashed down to Earth and it crashed down in Africa. Oh, um, right. And the League are there, like... Uh, I think it crash landed in Red Lion's country, which is I can't remember what it's called. Not I think Rwanda, it's a fictional nation. not Wakanda. I don't th- yeah, yeah, <laughs> not Wakanda. We'll call it that. Yeah, and because of that, they the people know the Justice League obviously protect people. So all of the refugees and people that like his country want to kill and stuff flood to the Watchtower mm. to look for protection. Right. Uh, so, so the so the league have to deal with that. Uh, Aquaman has been sent off on an assassination mission. Um, oh Jesus! He's wearing like 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 Frank Miller Daredevil costume, and and <laughs> and he's got like a gun, and he's going to try and kill. Who's he? Uh, he's trying to kill the fan, and he tracks right. him down to this apartment, and he finds out that it's the fan's best friend Dee's, the one who who he talked about got run over by a truck. Uh, right. and everything and he's like a super fan of like the justice league and superheroes so he has no idea what why aquaman is there and doesn't realize he's there to kill him but aquaman's <laughs> like yeah this this guy is not not the one we're after <laughs> um that's uh, funny they pick aquaman for that job hey i can kind of get away with this because no one really cares what i do that's exactly why they picked him that's exactly of why course. and because he's killed before <laughs> That's true. Hey, you and Wonder Woman kind of get a yeah. pass on the murder and, thing. And the fan actually kind of goaded him into it. I think last issue or the oh. issue before that saying because he knew there was like some story about Aquaman killing someone. So he was like, mm. you know, you're the only one who could do this. You know, Batman, Superman, all these other characters wouldn't do this, but you could. <laughs> That's fun. Um, but yeah, the, the fan appears again and he's got his own costume now. And it's like an amalgamation of all of the League's costume oh cool and he fights batman and what's what's really funny is he he knows he's going to get beaten by batman so he's telling batman how batman's going to beat him so it's like <laughs> you're going to overload my ring and my cape and all this stuff and he, he gets beaten and he's like oh that was so awesome can i join the justice league now <laughs> no <laughs> yeah and batman's like no you're going to be arrested and the league's like i can't arrest me i know too much you're gonna have to oh me. that's true that's a problem yeah how do they deal with that he knows their identities he knows their tricks yeah yeah yeah. so they still have to deal with that problem while also dealing with red lion trying to come and salvage the watchtower (laughs) and kill all these uh refugees and everything and in doing so wonder woman gets shot um and cyborg it's kind of weird cyborg gets like a fist ran through his stomach he's still alive (laughs) And he's like taken hostage by the Red Lion or something. We're not. I'm not really sure what what happened there because it was really confusing with the art. It kind of sucks being the Justice League at the moment, doesn't it? It does, but at the same time, it's really awesome that these aren't just like these aren't problems they have to deal with every issue. These are like yeah proper problems that they actually have no real say in. Like they can't impede in this in this country, but they're crash land there, so they can kind of but they can't because it would cause a big net international incident and incident yeah it's, it's really awesome this this is the definition of when the shit gets real yeah it, it's getting really real and this is all just from some like guy some fan yeah, i know <laughs> this this the, the, this was the realness levels before <laughs> and this is the realness levels <laughs> afterwards they they spiked exponentially as you can see on this graph um but yeah next issue is the last one and it looks like deathstroke's gonna be fighting them which makes, makes sense, sense. yeah because <laughs> christopher, christopher priest <laughs> hey i don't know if you know this but i've completely revitalized this book too and i think deathstroke is awesome also <laughs> i'm gonna be keeping writing deathstroke where you're taking justice league away from me so deathstroke beats everybody <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seems like the cover looks it has him like killing all of the justice league so yeah <laughs> <laughs> and Deathstroke saved the day. Go buy the new issue of Deathstroke. Stop buying yeah. Justice League because I don't get paid when you do. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe like now that he's a villain again, he'll be like, "Oh, I'm going to kill the Justice League, and I'm going to make my own Justice League." There you <laughs> like go. He, well, he already made it. Yeah, he just makes the second round. Uh, I'm going to do it better this time. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have a bunch of young kids on my team. I hate kids. Why did I form a kid team? <laughs> Kids piss me off. I don't even like my own children. <laughs> uh, I guess the last one I read this week, Damnation, issue number three of that Doctor Strange event. Yeah, how's that been? I, 
I've been enjoying it, although people are telling me the actual real story part is in the Doctor Strange book and the damnation stuff is just the big action scenes. Yeah, I, I, I did I keep seeing like in um when I go looking for like what books I've got to read the next week, I keep seeing stuff like Ghost Rider Damnation and mm. all these like tie ins. I'm like, is this tying into the da- damnation or the Doctor Strange book? <laughs> I'm I'm a little confused myself too, especially on that Ghost Rider one, which I was gonna pick up because Ghost Rider is actually a bit of a focal point of this issue. Wong, you know, he's pulled together this semi Midnight Suns team of magical heroes to go to Vegas and save Doctor Strange's soul from Mephisto. But Johnny Blaze, he's like, okay, you you have a special job though. I can't tell the other guys what you're doing because your job is really special, and I'm really gonna look to you on this one, Ghost Rider. So we get. A big fight in Vegas. Blade gets Thor's hammer dropped on him because because uh, Thor is possessed at the moment, and they're like, "Man, if you weren't a half vampire, and if uh, Brother Voodoo wasn't shooting you up with magic, that so would have killed you." <laughs> they they only get out of it because they're like, "Well, none of us are as worthy. We're monster hunters and everything. There's no way we could pull it off." Then Moon Knight steps up and goes, "Well, you know, I got a lot of split personalities in my head. Surely one of these guys has to be worthy." <laughs> I'll just cycle through them until we get one. <laughs> and, you know, they get the hammer off them, and that's really funny. And then, you know, they have a big fight. Everyone's fighting everyone else. And, you know, it's demons and superheroes, and it's everything. And then, like, like that moment in Lord of the Rings when it's like, oh, the elves have come to help. It's like that, but with Ghost Rider rolling up on his motorcycle. And it's like, oh, it's Ghost Rider. He's come to help. Oh, God. <laughs> And then, then he does the sickest, most evil Knievel jump over the battlefield <laughs> where everyone is fighting. Then he rides his hell chopper up the hell tower to where Mephisto is, comes crashing in, and he's like, I'm going to defeat you, Mephisto. And Mephisto's like, don't think so. In fact, hey, you know what? I'm going to do something I probably should have done a long time ago. Johnny Blaze, I lift your curse. <laughs> You are completely human. Then he, this is Sparta, kicks him out the window. It's like, oh my god, I did not think that through. <laughs> no, he really didn't. And then he seemingly dies. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but how? But how can he die though when he's getting a special tie-in issue this week? Eh, maybe that's like a prequel. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe dying was part of the plan. Maybe it's like, look, John, you need to die and go to hell while Mephisto's out. So, like, I don't know, take, like, an upper decker in his toilet and steal his Netflix yeah. password or maybe, something. Maybe, yeah, maybe he has to, like, die, go to hell, regain the spirit of vengeance, and then, like, come, come back or something. Yeah, maybe maybe you can meet the angel, Zassima, Z- whatever the fucking name the angel of vengeance is. <laughs> that guy. He's got to go meet that guy. <laughs> Which, I wonder, too, if, like, depowering Ghost Rider in this story is part of their bigger thing to try and, like, elevate Robbie Reyes, who is going to be on the new Avengers. Yeah, maybe, because obviously they've tied him into that whole Marvel legacy thing. So Without thinking. Yeah, so maybe they're like, yeah, maybe this is some way of killing off that one so we don't can't bring him back and people won't be like, oh, just bring him uh- back. Because, because again, Jason Aaron kind of fucked up in that store when he's like, "Oh, and Robbie Reyes, who is connected to the Spirit of Vengeance, eh? No, he isn't. He is in the TV show. In the comics, it's his uncle's soul that's in him that gives him his power." Yeah, I'm sure most people who picked up that book didn't read the Robbie Solo series, but I did, <laughs> and I know what's up. But yeah, Damnation, Damnation is fun. Does it's not going to change the world, but it's a fun issue. It's a fun story. Sounds good yeah what uh, what did you have matt what was your last book to take I, us out i had something a little bit different it's not a book and i want to talk about this oh. and that is i want oh. to talk about oh. the first episode of krypton okay yeah let's talk about this because you're the biggest superman fan i know so yeah, let, yeah. Let, let's get did, into it did you re- watch it yes i did actually i watched it for a whole other project but yes i did watch it yeah i was pretty surprised by it it's it's enjoyable enough it does a good job being a young adult sci-fi show where every so often they'll just mention a superman word yeah and what what really surprised me was the amount of attention that went into like the lore of like the these yeah of of krypton and some of the words some of the words they were using and places they visited and stuff like that were really good they they definitely took a couple passes at this one they've got 
uh, you know, our, our, our would-be evil authoritarian villain, the voice of Rao, apparently Krypton, a place that will be known for its scientific advancement and technology. Everything is in the middle of kind of its own dark ages right now because a tyrannical religious order is calling all the shots. Yeah, I, I predict that 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 voice of Rao is going to be revealed to be like Glorious Godfrey or something, the entire apocalypse oh, into it somehow. That would be fun. Uh, what is it? Our, our, our main character there, Sig L, who we're following, who, you know, completely goes against all the other members of the L family we've seen up until now who have all been, like, you know, smart scientists and everything. He's a dumbass and a bar fighter. Well, what I found really interesting is the thing that, like, how they've been stripped of their House of L name and now mm. they're, like, they're... I can't remember what they... they I think they were the... Castless. Yeah, the castless. Um, they're like the unwashed masses that aren't like important yeah. enough to be in a house. And I thought that was pretty cool and it, it, kind of unique because it gives him a mission of getting his house back in order and everything. Gives, it, it, it's a good season long art, gives them something to work for. And heck, even Adam Strange says, Hey, here's your symbol on Superman's cape. Like, you, you do do this. You do eventually reclaim the house of al and it becomes a big deal but you gotta stop fucking up because if you do you'll destroy the future yeah and adam strange inclusion was good because i because from the trailers and stills it looked like he time travels there and stays there yeah whereas in this he's kind of like a i guess, I guess like a, a, a person on the shoulder of seagull a little bit like yeah. he disappears and gets sucked back into his present time and everything he's his jimmy cricket yeah yeah and um doesn't stay around for too long um what i found really interesting and i noticed this and so did tom when he watched it a lot of the show seems to be have have been reshot yeah uh in that like uh, i pointed out on twitter like the crystal he gets is different since there's now a kryptonian sun crystal whereas before it was like one that was closer to the one in man of steel that little key thing and lots of all this other stuff has been reshot and i imagine stuff like the john williams theme being in it was was a reshoot as well getting to see brainiac even Mm -hmm. the brainiac looks amazing he really does like if anything was going to keep me watching and if anything was going to make me tune back in again it's the fact that brainiac looks fucking dope yeah and his skull ship was so awesome it's it's like why is none of this in the movie why exactly. this is too good why did it take TV? a tv show to like make a perfect brainiac so so sad that that was ended up how it happened <laughs> i like to sigel's mom is the mom from uh ray donovan yeah yeah i knew that i i was watching that and i'm like she looks really familiar where have i seen him ah that's right ray donovan she was cussing out she's, <laughs> leave schreiber <laughs> yeah she's she's also one of the prostitutes from deadwood and she's also <laughs> the uh the irish woman from sons of anarchy so she gets around that actress <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was really cool. It had some really cool set designs. The effects were really oh, yeah. cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah I'm, a plus for the prop department. Yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping they were able to maintain that throughout the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it looks looks pretty cool, and I'm interested to see where it's going to go. Especially since we've yeah. already got confirmation that we're going to get like Thanagar and Hawkman and mm-hmm. Hawkwoman and all Doomsday yeah. and all these all these properties are coming into this show, which is really awesome. Yeah. I don't think it's the sort of thing I feel like I need to watch every week, but I'll probably tune in when something cool happens, when it's like, hey, the Hawk people are in this episode, or hey, you know, uh, what is it, Brainiac comes back in this one. Yeah, I I can't wait for Brainiac to actually come and we actually see his full costume and everything. That'll be interesting. Yeah, because it's all a practical effect with Brainiac, so he's got like a, a proper actor playing him and everything, which is really awesome. That's cool. So yeah, that's uh, that's our thoughts on Krypton, everyone. Good good job reminding me about that one, Matt, because I did watch it. I just didn't know where I was going to put my thoughts. Yeah, I, I did a review of the first episode, but I'm not going to review any of the other episodes. I'm going to wait until the season ends, because it's only like 10 yeah. episodes or something. Yeah, and also TV reviews for us seem to be death most times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, no, nobody gives a fuck, which is funny because I see other people we work with in the same similar capacity do so much better talking about TV, and I'm like, but why? I don't know. I don't why, know. Why? Why you, but not me? I'm the jealous type. In case you didn't know, <laughs> so jelly, so jelly. Uh, and on that note, everyone, I guess we can start bringing this show down. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and favor if you haven't already. Leave a comment. 
if you're a patron, you'll get to listen to this one early before anyone else, uh, both in audio and in video version. I handle the audio. Matt handles the video. <laughs> That's how it's done. You can also listen to the show over on SoundCloud. Uh, thank you for the fan who wrote me on Facebook and said, hey, Joel, I'm a podcaster, too. I know you keep complaining about getting it for iTunes. I can help you. Thank you for offering to help me. Maybe for 100 episodes, we'll try and get that sorted. Yeah, sounds good. There you go. Any uh, any projects there, Matt, you want to pimp out? Uh, I, got a, I got a big two-week action comic celebration coming up um sort of covering the weeks that i'm away um mm -hmm. uh, which is beginning on the 2nd of april and i think going till the i don't want to say a date until in case it's wrong like the mm. like the 9th 10th um <laughs> yeah keep, i got a couple of videos coming out then so keep an eye out for them um and yeah that's about it yeah Sounds good. Uh, obviously, while Matt's gone, you'll still be taken care of in terms of content. I have a special co-host lined up that we're going to be going this week. I also have the Justice League commentary, which is also coming out. Might move that one around a bit, but you're going to be getting them, is what I'm saying. Of course, if you're a patron, you've already heard the Justice League commentary, but if not, you can become <laughs> one for as little as a dollar a month. Also, if you like video games, if you like comedy, and if you like... Uh, stuff starring me if you head on over to the joel daily channel uh me and my dad cape dad got together and started <laughs> playing that new haze light prison break game uh a way out we co opt that one together so if you want to hear father and son yell at each other for 30 minutes at a time you can do it it's a lot of fun we made it we streamed it for like three hours on twitch and we got to the halfway point so we felt pretty good about that awesome we, we broke out of jail in the jailbreak game. That's always good. <laughs> but hey, when you break out of jail, there's like more game after that. Yeah. Uh, so thank you everyone for watching. As always, I have been Cape Joel. I'm Matt. And we will see you all again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.